Meet Dream Chaser, Sierra Space's sleek, winged spacecraft that looks like a modern revival of NASA's iconic space shuttle. Compared to the typical capsule designs like SpaceX's Crew Dragon, this thing is a head-turner. But here's the catch. It still hasn't launched. While Dragon racks up missions, Dream Chaser's debut keeps getting delayed, leaving Sierra Space stuck on the runway. This has left the company's leadership in a state of dismay. And in a bold effort to change that, Sierra Space has made a big decision that, if successful, will turn the tide and maybe even put it on the same playing field as Dragon. Find out everything in today's Tech Map episode. This whole journey really kicked off back in 2014 when Sierra Nevada Corporation SNC lost a lawsuit against NASA. The lawsuit stems from the National Space Agency awarding its coveted crewed spaceflight contracts to SpaceX and Boeing, leaving SNC out in the cold. A big reason? SNC was banking on its innovative Dream Chaser space plane, a sleek, winged vehicle reminiscent of the space shuttle, while competitors stuck with the more conventional, flight-proven capsule design. But as they say, when one door closes, another opens. Fast forward to 2016, and SNC got a second chance. NASA selected Dream Chaser for its Commercial Resupply Services to contract. But there was a twist. While Dream Chaser was originally intended to carry astronauts, its debut mission would be an uncrewed cargo flight. Still, SNC hasn't shelved its crewed ambitions. Right now, their top priority is getting the cargo version flight ready. Even with its shift in focus, the Dream Chaser is still cool, whether it's flying with a crew or carrying cargo. There's something truly special about seeing the spirit of NASA's iconic space shuttle reborn. This time in a sleeker, more advanced, and more dependable form. So the question here, when will it launch? In 2020, Steve Lindsay, SNC's Vice President of Space Exploration Systems, was optimistic announcing a 2021 target launch. But here we are, four years later, and Dream Chaser is still grounded. The first cargo model, aptly named Tenacity, is in its final testing phase at NASA facilities, and now aiming for a launch no earlier than quarter three 2025. So what's been holding things up? The biggest culprit is launch logistics. Dream Chaser was supposed to ride on United Launch Alliance's new Vulcan Centaur rocket, but ULA had to push back that launch plan to prioritize getting Vulcan certified for high-priority U.S. Space Force missions. That meant dummy payloads took the spotlight, while Dream Chaser's debut got benched. While there is a tentative launch slot for Tenacity in late 2025, everything remains uncertain. ULA is juggling a heavy backlog of military launches, pushing that 2025 timeline even further. SNC did have a backup, ULA's trusted Atlas V rocket. But relying on a single launch provider, especially one in transition, is risky. ULA officially stopped making the Atlas V in 2024, and with only 14 launches left to fulfill existing commitments, like Boeing's Starliner and other government payloads, Dream Chaser's chances of hitching a ride on one are slim. With pressure mounting, it might be time for a hard reset. Look at Blue Origin. After years of delays on the new Glenn rocket, they swapped leadership in 2023. Dave Limp took over as CEO. And sure enough, new Glenn finally launched in early 2025. Now, Sierra Space could be hoping for the same turnaround. At the end of 2024, longtime CEO Tom Weiss stepped down after leading since 2021 when the company spun out from SNC. Chairman Fadi Osman stepped in as interim CEO, while Aaron Osman became president. It's a pivotal moment, and one that could define Dream Chaser's future in space. If Sierra Space's tenacity successfully enters service, it could outshine Boeing's troubled CST-100 Starliner and stand alongside SpaceX's trusted Crew Dragon, not based on flight history but on its promising future potential. While adopting the capsule design on Dragon, rooted in the Apollo era, 
allowed NASA to swiftly end its reliance on Russia's Soyuz spacecraft and enabled Dragon to enter service more quickly. It also places limitations on long-term capabilities. Dragon capsules splash down in the ocean. But Dream Chaser is built to glide back to Earth and land on traditional runways almost anywhere. That kind of airplane-like convenience means faster, gentler returns of cargo and experiments, reducing stress on fragile payloads. This makes Dream Chaser especially appealing for critical scientific research and time-sensitive missions. Its reusable design also stands out. Most parts of the spacecraft, except for the cargo module, can fly multiple missions, potentially slashing operating costs. The smooth runway landings and overall versatility make Dream Chaser a strong candidate not just for cargo, but for future crewed missions, satellite servicing, and even trips to higher orbits with added radiation protection. Though Dream Chaser's cargo limit is about 5.5 tons, slightly less than Dragon's 6 tons, it compensates with a roomier interior and a larger docking port, which can simplify the handling of complex payloads. Last but certainly not least, once the ISS is retired, Dragon is likely to face a similar fate as its usefulness outside of ISS missions is quite limited. By contrast, Sierra Space continues to soar ahead. However, for Elon Musk, this was never the endgame. Since the beginning, Dragon was more of a stepping stone than a destination. Musk's sights were always set way beyond low Earth orbit. He's not in this to build a cozy capsule for quick trips to space stations. He wants a city on Mars. And to do that, you don't need a compact spacecraft. You need a monster. Enter Starship. While others are still refining capsules that carry a few tons, like Sierra Space's Dream Chaser, around six tons, Starship is a game changer. We're talking about a spacecraft that can haul 100 metric tons per flight. That's not a small step. That's a quantum leap. Now imagine what you can pack with that kind of payload. Full-sized Mars habitats. Advanced life support systems. Scientific laboratories. Construction equipment. Surface vehicles. Fuel production machines that literally turn Martian air and ice into rocket fuel enabling not just survival, but return trips and long-term exploration. And this isn't some vague sci-fi dream. SpaceX plans to kick off uncrewed cargo missions as soon as 2026. These early flights will drop everything needed to set up a self-sustaining base. Food-growing facilities, oxygen generators, in-situ resource utilization units for turning carbon dioxide and ice into fuel, and the raw materials to build Mars Base Alpha the first true human outpost on another planet. Then comes the human crew. Maybe a dozen brave pioneers around 2029 or early 2030. Their mission? Set up infrastructure, test the tech, and start tapping into Mars' own resources to support long-term human presence. And here's the wild part. Musk doesn't plan to stop there. He's imagining a fleet of hundreds, eventually thousands, of starships making the interplanetary journey during those rare Earth-Mars transfer windows every 26 months. The goal, a million people on Mars by mid-century. Of course, this vision is massively ambitious. The hurdles are huge. Radiation shielding sustainable food production, water extraction, closed-loop life support systems, scalable Martian infrastructure. But Musk isn't backing down. For him, this isn't just about exploring Mars. It's about ensuring humanity's survival. If Earth ever faces a catastrophic event, we'll have a second home in the stars. And more than that, it's about pushing the frontier of human civilization. So yeah, retiring Dragon may feel like the end of an era. But in reality, it's just the beginning of something much, much bigger. When it comes to bold, risky, and potentially game-changing technology, NASA doesn't usually jump in head first. But with SpaceX's Starship, they made an exception. Despite still being under development and carrying plenty of risk, Starship's sheer potential was just too big to ignore. That's why in 2019, NASA awarded SpaceX a major contract under its Artemis program to build a human landing system. 
a lunar lander version of Starship, to put American astronauts back on the moon. Yes, Starship, this massive stainless steel rocket not even fully flight tested yet, beat out more conventional designs. Meanwhile, Dream Chaser is now simply set to fly to low Earth orbit. Impressive, yes, but limited. Starship, on the other hand, is aiming straight for the moon and far beyond. Under this contract, Starship will play a starring role in Artemis III, the mission planned to land the first woman and next American man on the moon. This will be its first real-world test in a crewed lunar landing scenario. But NASA didn't stop there. They also exercised what's called Option B, a continuation of the original deal, to develop a more advanced, second-generation version of Starship HLS for Artemis IV. This version will perform another crewed landing as part of a broader lunar exploration mission. However, here's where things get a bit uncertain. NASA's 2026 budget proposal doesn't currently allocate funding for beyond Artemis III, which means Artemis III could be the last moon landing, for now. Still, that one mission is a huge opportunity for Starship to showcase its next-gen capabilities and lay the groundwork for the real prize, Mars. One of the biggest technological leaps Starship will demonstrate with Artemis III is in-orbit refueling. Before heading to the moon, Starship will dock in low Earth orbit and refuel using specially designed tanker Starships. Why does this matter? Because for Mars missions, this tech is absolutely critical. Without in-orbit refueling, Starship couldn't carry the kind of heavy cargo and crew needed for interplanetary travel. Mastering this technique during a lunar mission is like taking your first driving lesson in a Formula One car. You either learn fast or fail spectacularly. It's worth noting, Starship HLS won't return to Earth. It's designed to act as a lunar ferry, transporting astronauts from lunar orbit down to the surface and back. But in doing so, it's gathering data on precision landings, terrain handling, and surface operations, skills that will be absolutely vital for future Mars landings. For Artemis III, NASA plans to use a near rectilinear halo orbit as a staging point. That's where Orion and Starship will dock, transfer crew, and then Starship will take them to the moon. All of this is part of a bigger picture. NASA's moon missions aren't just about flags and footprints anymore. They're about building a sustainable presence, first on the moon, then on Mars. Bottom line, Artemis is more than a return to the moon. It's a rehearsal for humanity's next giant leap. And Starship is more than a spacecraft. It's the tip of the spear for a multi-planetary future.